Welcome to the channel folks, Clunkers and Classics, where we are restoring this 68 Chevelle Nomad wagon. And uh, last episode we put on all the uh, steering, suspension, disc brake, conversion, the rotors, and all that. I'm going to get new lug nuts, but i got to figure out which rims I'm going to use. Because you can get the uh, acorn type, or this type. Anyway, I just put them on there for now so I didn't lose them. And I don't have very many that fit very good. I think mostly because the lug nuts are worn out. Uh, I was just steering it around and busted my rag joint. So yeah, we got all that done. Um, so the next step is to put on the power brake booster. It came with these new stuff here uh, to mount it on the brake pedal. Okay, then the uh, master cylinder came with that. And then the proportioning valve, there's a little bracket I think the, it mounts mounts on this master cylinder somehow. Uh, these are the only brake lines that come with it. I believe I need to recheck, but I believe they have a kit for hard brake lines, but I'm not sure uh, what comes in it and if it's exactly what I need. If if I can get a kit that all the lines just fit perfect then I'll probably get that but uh, if not I may have to make some brake lines oh and the other was the uh, these come with the brake kit here but these are for the uh, it came with a little bleeder thing too but uh, these come with the these mount to the rotors, and according to the pictures, it comes with these, and then it's supposed to have crushable washers and two little brackets to mount this weldable brackets. They said, well, they they they're not included unless the washers are in I'm gonna have to turn this somehow uh, do you come that was already in the caliper there and it's got two washers on it that's where the brake line connects to um, yeah two little brackets like this but I already have the factory ones, but there's anyway those th these two brackets weren't included. The crushable washers weren't included. They're supposed to be, but they weren't. And something else. So I don't know if I'll need them or not. <clears throat> but anyway, we're gonna start with the uh, we're gonna start with the uh, brake booster. You can see here, this didn't come with power brakes, but uh, they're supposed to be, I believe it's got the four holes, okay. We're going to take that off. Here's the factory proportioning valve here. Uh, the new one's going to be mounted up in here. So that's why I don't think the lines are going to work. Uh, this line here goes to the back. And this goes to the right front, left front. And then these two come up to the master cylinder. Okay, so far these brake lines have come off okay. Said so these ones here. Without bending and rusting, being rusted and bent and twisted and all that. Uh, they came they came off surprisingly after 54 years okay so uh, 
since this rag joint here broke I may just take this whole column out that may be in the way well, let's just go in and see oh, I have to get light in here to get some a light in there I believe it's I believe up here the little pivot deal there uh, a little brake light button just pushes all the way in it's it's shot too let's get a new new brake uh, brake light button okay so uh yeah, I may, might have to take the column out and take this whole thing out, but uh, we'll see. Okay, well, let me get get on with that, and I'll show you show you how to take it off once I get it off. Um, okay, well, I'll be back. Oh, uh, want to thank whoever sent this. Check my P.O. box. Um, Brandon sent me these little uh, chrome stick-on things there. He just said, well, do whatever you want with them. Anyway, another package. Somebody sent me a six-pack of 415. Appreciate that very much. I don't know if it was Brandon or somebody else. There was no note in it. Uh, Thanks for that. Really appreciate it. I use I use the hell out of it. Um, okay, so I will be back. Okay, guys. Yeah, this brake line twisted and broke. I spoke too soon. Okay, just take off these four uh, nuts here. Uh, just pulled the steering column. And uh, there was just this one bolt here for that bracket. Bracket for the brake pedal. Just disconnected the uh, brake light switch, which I'll have to get another one, but I think any store carries them. Okay, so... This is the replacement for this. You take this clip out, I guess put in the new one. And the, uh, I'm not exactly sure why they give you that, but. And then this just screws in To here this just turns uh, then I guess that's for your adjustment um, well, that might just be for a different type of car but that looks like what we'll we'll need I could screw into that but you can see that's all rusted so glad to give you a new deal okay so let me uh, I hope we can get that in there. It should be able to. Uh, we'll just leave that column out of there and bolt. Okay, let me take that off and put this new one on with the clip. And then uh, we'll see if this will fit in there. It should be the same. I'll just measure it, but it, yeah, it, it should be the same length from there to there. That uh, actually goes in there, so, okay, uh, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got the power brake booster on there. Uh, it lined right up to the bolts. 
two bolts on each side. And I put that bracket This is the bracket right here. I kind of put that up. That goes up in behind the column when the column bolts to these. And, uh, and then it has one more over here I showed you. But yeah, uh, see if we can get underneath here. That's it there where it connects up there. And it's got adjustment in it, but I got, I kind of got the column and stuff in the way, but we can check that later and you can adjust it. And then you tighten that one bolt up when you got it adjusted. Uh, okay, so we'll put the uh, brake booster on. That's just the two bolts. Oh, that's what that other rod was for. This rod here is for, for the... Uh, the brake booster, I guess. Yeah. We have it in there backwards. Yeah. Okay. So let me get that on there, and then we got to figure out the brake lines, see what we need. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys. And the little packet of stuff is this little spacer thing. And you put that. Put that in here like that it touches this and uh, so yeah you don't need uh, I don't know exactly what that's for I guess I could read the instructions but I think that's just for a different model or something but anyway just thought I'd show you that I'll put that on there okay guys Got the proportioning valve on there. Uh, here's for the brake light. This is the factory one here. So I'm going to, I just kind of tape them together. That's going to be spliced into that wire. Okay, so these are the two that come from the master cylinder, obviously. Uh, these two, this one and this one go to the front. And then this big one goes to the back. So what we have with the old one, these two here go to the master cylinder, which, which these replace that. So these two you don't need anymore. And then uh, the back one is just this one here. So I don't know, going to need a, an adapter from there to here. And as far as the two front, this is the right and the left. And that one looks like a big one and a small one. And they need to go there and there. And they look to be about the same size. So I'm going to look up the uh, hardline brake kit that I think it's this place that sells. It may be a different place, but it had a hardline brake kit. Uh, so I basically need these two lines here. See these, these two flexible lines, they'll go, they go from the caliper, uh, up somewhere. So you'll need a line from here. From here to these two. So this one's a little line from this side, but that one's going to be a big long one. <clears throat> it's all the way over here and around to there. So I'm going to look up that. Other than that, I think it's pretty much done. Uh, I guess I should have read the instructions first. Um, it says... That brake booster where we changed over the uh, 
interchanged over this deal. Uh, it goes on to the brake pedal. Like that, the brake pedal uh, mounting thing. Um, it says that it may have two holes that this goes in. And one should be an inch. The manual uses the one above. And then there's supposed to be a hole below it. So if you're using uh, power brakes, you lower it an inch. And if the holes aren't there, you got to drill your own hole. So I, I should have read the instructions first. I, I think there was only one hole that it went to. Uh, but I do have the other 69 Chevelle parts car out there that, well, I don't know if that was power. It may not have been power. It's going to say, and go look at that and see if it's got two holes. Uh, I don't know if it'll work like that or not. It seems to be all right. But anyway, just something to think about. Uh, I'll be back. Okay, guys. We got this line here. Um, it could go there. Or I was thinking of moving it over to here. I think either way would be okay. Probably over here. That way it doesn't get in the, in the way of this. Uh, I just... This was the original... Original one that went here. Down to the proportioning valve there. So... We mount it here. We need to go up. Through here up to here bottom or the top probably the bottom okay so I went to uh, Harbor Freight first and I got I think I have I think I have this piece here and this but I don't have any of this or it's lost long gone so um I bought this from Harbor Freight and it, it wasn't cheap. Like 69 bucks. 69 and then I bought this uh brake line forming tool. Hopefully you can get some bends out of it. Okay. Uh So then I went to AutoZone. There's all new guys working there. They don't know shit. So he shows me all these. They have some lines between a foot and two foot. He's like, oh, this is all we have. And then this is in, in the back part of it there where all the parts are. So as I was walking out, the next aisle over, it has, it has this. Because I said, well, don't you have them in rolls? No, no, I don't think so. And then I say this, and he goes, oh, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I guess we do. So anyway, I got this, but then I thought about it. It's steel. It's 27 bucks. So I used my, uh, I brought this with me. So it is 3 sixteenths. And I got four little ends for it. Um, but I thought it's going to be kind of hard to flare that. It would be better... I should have read I should have went back and rechecked see if they had some copper or or you know less harder ones so they would uh, flare easier but we'll try this so we'll cut out a section and see if we can flare it so that's on the agenda and then of course this other front one you know it comes around here I don't know if I can get all these bends in here guys of course it'll instead of going to this proportioning valve it'll go up I don't know it'll go up in here we'll have to bend it around the steering column or something so anyway I'll be back when I start flaring and I'll show you guys we'll see how that goes okay so I'll be back okay guys that's what I did last night 
uh, routed the line up to here and then made a line with two flares. This is uh, the left front here and then the right front is this one here. And I mounted this one in the factory spot because I didn't want to attempt to make this line here. You know, there's a lot of curves. It goes here, right here. I didn't want to just kind of make a one and kind of hang it down or anything in case it gets caught putting the engine in. Anyway, it goes across like this, bends up, and then went into the uh, proportioning valve. So this is the new one here, so I'm just going to get a little adapter and screw, screw these two in. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to make that flare. I just made a regular flare there. I followed the instructions to make, I don't know what they had written here. make a double flaring and a bubble flaring I tried both of them but none of them looked right uh, so I just made a regular flare and I started see this is the bubble flare here um, I don't know where that one went no that's a regular flare. That's all crooked, but then this one here, I tried it a different way. I made the double flare thing first, which you put one of these deals in there. Like that, and then, of course, put it in this deal here. And then push that down, and then I took it out raised it up and then just use the regular deal there and actually that looks closer closer to a double flare there see of course that one's crooked too this is just a junk piece i was experimenting with so i don't know uh whether i gotta redo all them or not i don't know if they'll work with just a regular flare like that uh, I already screwed all these ones in okay so this goes to the rear and uh, oh anyway I blew this line out here for the right side put air in there and it blew out nothing's clogged up or anything there was actually a little bit of fluid in there unbelievable that there was um, I'm going to blow this rear one out and I think I'm going to do the same thing with this. Get a little adapter and then just build a line coming up through here. And it mounts. It mounts in here, but I couldn't find anything to fit it. So I'm going to, I'm hoping AutoZone has something that fits that. And so anyway, just run a line there and then down to the rear. And then we'll fill her flu full of fluid and uh, see if it leaks anywhere. If it does, I'm going to have to redo them flares, try the little double flaring technique. Here's the old master cylinder here. <clears throat> That's what was in it. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know if I can... Uh, if that rear... I'm going to blow air down here and make sure that that rear is open. I, I left it. I put all new brakes on the back a while back and wheel cylinders, but I didn't connect the line to them. So I'm going to blow air through them, but I should probably replace that uh, center rubber hose. So anyway, that's the plan. I'll go up to AutoZone here this afternoon and... Uh, put them on there and test it out so I'll be back okay guys after uh, 
multiple trips to AutoZone. I think I got everything. Okay, this is uh, this is called a Union uh, deal, and this ties the uh, right brake to the to the and this is a new line I made here to the master cylinder or to the proportioning valve. Okay, this is another union that goes to the rear brakes. Let me just. Uh, I just got that loose because, let me just take that off, I blew air down here and uh, it doesn't come out the other end. Okay, so it's blocked off, blocked somewhere in the back. So once I figure that out, then I'll reconnect that. That's where that goes. Okay, I got my air hose here. That's where I had the air going like there so I could leave it there and go to the back and see. So I'll show you in a minute what I think it is. Okay, uh, my rag joint broke here uh, for the steering column. Uh, I just ordered a new one from, from uh, eBay. You can buy just this rag thing for like 20 bucks or you can buy the whole assembly for like 50 something so that's what I did I just ordered the whole thing and they said there's a difference between power steering and manual steering so I made sure I got the power one uh, it broke because it was old and plus it's it's you know I got it disconnected here so it was you know not even with the box and put a lot of stress on it so I'm going to uh, put probably put it on when I bolt the column back in there so the new one doesn't get all stressed out and break. Okay, so I think that's about it. Here's where the, uh, I said before, this is the front for the front brakes, left and right. And then this goes, to, just one line goes to the rear brakes. Okay, so... Here's the old lines from the old rear end. If you remember, I, if you've been watching for a while, I changed the whole rear end out. And I took the brakes. Okay, this will go something like this. These ends here go to the wheel cylinder on each end. Actually, the wheel cylinder's still in there. So I got all new stuff on the new rear end. So that goes in like that. This line will go to a hard line which runs all the way up, which I just showed you that's clogged. So when shooting air in, it's obviously, and this is a little T connection here that, that goes to the left and the right. So it's clogged up. It's most likely in here. Um, and this is all one. This hose, this T connection is part of the hose. Okay, so uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack up the back. I, I have uh, a bunch of work to do underneath. I still need to sand and pour 15 that back uh, underneath the back seat. Um, so I'm going to put it up on jack stands and take off these lines one by one. And uh, they're, they're not connected. I even got these disconnected here. So if I undo this line underneath, I can just pull each line out and test them, blow air through them. So uh, it could be these little lines, but this is going to be 54 years old. So I'm, I'm, most, I'm hoping the parts store has it, but I'm going to change over this and then blow out these lines. If uh, they're clogged, um, then I might make new ones. This is the same, the same width as the new roll that I got. I bought this whole roll here, so I believe that's the same width, uh, three sixteenths, I believe. And then this line here was uh, for the back was a, a quarter. Yeah, that was a quarter, a little bit wider. 
Okay, so that's the next step. But basically all the front's done. <clears throat> this is all hooked up. I'm still not sure on that angle of uh, whether I should put it an inch lower or not. The other Chevelle uh, is standard brakes and that whole brake pedal assembly is missing. I don't, I don't know what I did with it. I must have took it off for some reason. Don't know where it where it is. It it may be in in my shed over there, but I doubt it's going to have that second hole an inch below it. If it was power, maybe. So I'm not sure. I'm going to check this out more. If it seems like it's binding up, I may have to take that brake pedal assembly off and drill a hole an inch lower so it's more uh, straighter. So it doesn't make sure it doesn't not gonna bind up or nothing like that okay so I think that's it for now uh, I got a whole list of other stuff to do but I'll probably put that on another video um, got a whole bunch of little stuff to do like I said pour 15 underneath there uh, if I didn't mention it, it's probably going to be another 10 days before these belt moldings get here before I can finish up the door panels uh, but I got the uh, duct these ducts here this goes up to the defroster uh, another duct work just two they go in in behind here I'm gonna mount them um, Try to get everything buttoned up underneath there that I can. Figure out that uh, <clears throat> vacuum wiring, where it exactly goes. I think I just got one line disconnected. I'll probably figure that out pretty easy. Uh, so I got a bunch of little stuff, but like I said, I'll probably save that for the next video. Have this one concentrate more on the, on the uh, brakes case anybody's doing it uh, I did a solder connection here for the for the uh, brake light okay uh, yeah I was probably gonna uh, tape up a bunch of these wires probably this one here this goes in here uh, tape up all this I'm not exactly sure where that goes I think it goes there but I got my 69 Chevelle I can look on there uh, to see so anyway, uh, let me jack it up, get with the rear brakes, and I'll let you know what's clogged up and what i got to replace. And then I can hook them up to the wheel cylinders and then fill it up and uh, start pumping the system full of fluid. See if there's any leaks, see if these flares are any good that I made or if I have to redo them. If i got to redo them, i got plenty of uh, tube. So anyway, uh, I'll be back later. Okay, guys, here's the brake line assembly off the car. Uh, I blew air in one of these, and it came out of the other one. But blow air in this, and it doesn't come out, so it's clogged up. It's clogged up in here, probably right in here somewhere. But we're going to replace this anyway because uh, of the rubber hose being 54 years old. Uh, the steel line, I blew air down there and it come right out the other end. In fact, some brake fluid came out too. There's some brake fluid there and it's, that's a line right there. Okay, so I think I'll check with the uh, AutoZone, see if they got a new one of them. They should. It should be a pretty common thing on GM cars. Uh, if not, they can probably order one, get it tomorrow, or get one off eBay if they don't stock these at all. But anyway, I'll be back. Feeding time at the zoo. puppy over here just had a rib dinner puppy ate all the rib bones 
Puppy, did you like all them rib bones? They were good, weren't they? Okay, guys. So, uh, I went down to AutoZone and ordered this hose. It's like 21 bucks. Um, this is a little union junction, whatever you want to call it. It is clear. I blew air in there and it comes out both, both ends. So that thing's good. Plus, they don't have a separate part number thing for this. You'd have to go and try to find one. Uh, so yeah, that's what I ordered here. Uh, it won't be until 11 in the morning tomorrow. And then uh, I won't be able to put it on until tomorrow night sometime. Because uh, it's still 100 degrees every day here, guys. It was... I don't know what it was today, 100 and something sunny. It's going to be 104 tomorrow. And then the next day it'll dip down to 95. But it's still going to be hot for about another month. Hot where I can't work all day. I can only work a few hours in the morning, a few hours at night. Uh, but yeah, I can't, you know, I'm not going to clean out the garage and push it in and out every, every night to work. Plus, I like working outside. So, we're going to end this video on that. Next video, we'll get this in. Uh, basically, we'll just hook that up. I'll tighten this little union up here. And uh, we'll just fill it full of fluid, see if there's any leaks. See if these flare joints are going to leak. They, Like I said, they might. I might have to redo it. But Okay, um, I already started on the AC ducts I had a roll of new stuff okay these are the these are the two vents I put some of that uh, some of this stuff here uh, right around the edges here it had some foam so at least they won't be loose so the duct hooks on the end of this uh, it didn't actually quite fit and I just looked it up on eBay and uh, they got all different sizes It really supposed to go over top But it didn't I stuffed it inside and it went in pretty good and then I put some uh, duct tape around it I mean that's why they call it duct tape because it's for ducks so uh, First of all I put this this one in here for the defrost. This is supposed to also have some foam around it, but I figured it'll have enough force to get up there and uh, and uh, clean the windshield of fog. Or I could, you know, get some more of that stuff and put it around the edges, but I think it'd be alright. Okay, so we got that on there with two screws. Got this center thing on and this blows out uh, hot and cold to the floor and then this piece here goes on top of that and it it actually mounts up like this and then uh, into the dash and then there's a little deal that, that mounts on there so you can uh, deflect it so this hose here goes up like this above the uh, glove box See when you lift it up, it goes up pretty high. So I need some more of this for the driver's side. And we'll go over there. Did I have it out here? I think I put it back in there. I didn't see this for sale on eBay, but the original duck work. Uh See this, this mounts in the dash part here. So it's gonna be round on one end. It comes up round and then it kind of goes flat and mounts in this end here. It goes above the uh, gauges and everything. So it's supposed to be more flat up here and then it'll turn round. I didn't see that, but I think 
I think this stuff here you can you can flatten it out I mean it's pretty flexible um, as long as I get the right size so you got to put in all that duct work uh, well preferably put it in before you put the dash and everything together but we're not putting the dash and everything in together for quite a while uh, we're gonna it'll be after the LS swap I'm just trying to get all this stuff here kind of put in for now I'll probably take that up there um, I don't know if there's supposed to be some duct work duct tape or something around the end of that but okay uh, yeah so I'm just doing a few little things probably get that uh, next video we'll get that glove box painted and uh, put that on there since I think everything's done done on that side so we'll kind of get the passenger side done mix up some black paint paint that glove box lid uh, this area here um, and that piece that goes on the back tailgate okay um, I should have opened up the this little rubber stopper here I guess I'll use it off the uh, A-frames that the other place sent me they sent me the two upper A-frames and no bottom ones somebody said oh well, you're supposed to send that back no they didn't ask for it back um, they didn't ask for it back and uh, as most places if you ever you know, we want a refund or something or send it back. They tell you to keep it. Okay, so there, I'll just take that stopper off this one. This is that box from, uh, whatever, Tom's Auto. And, uh, see, those guys are here in the States in an office. You order from them, and then they send a message to China, and that China drop ships it here. Or they... They come over on a container, big container ship with millions of parts on it. So this thing costs like, you know, five cents to ship on a container ship. Gets to a warehouse here, and then it gets shipped to you. So they don't have a warehouse to stock this stuff. It's just they're sitting in an office somewhere in their house or somewhere, and there's nowhere to send this to. Because if you try to send this to China, back to China where it's made, it costs you a fortune. U.S. shipping from here to China. So they don't want it back. Okay? So they didn't ask for it. So anyway, uh, I don't know what I'll do with these. They're really no use to me, I don't think, without the, uh, with the bottoms and the, and the right spindle. So, you know, I don't even think you can order the, the, just the bottoms and the spindle if I wanted to use it for another Chevelle. It's supposed to fit 64 to 72. But uh, anyway, I'll take out this little thing here. That's just a little lesson in how all that shipping and stuff works. Like I said, 99% of the time, these guys just say keep it. And they, they have to refund your money if it screws up. I don't know if they're going to go through shipping. See, it's... I don't know what it came in. FedEx, I think. It's really FedEx's fault for if it's all supposed to come in one box and it didn't, then it's all beat up. So I don't know if they filed insurance on it. They didn't ask me to sign anything or anything. I did send them pictures. Maybe they sent the pictures to FedEx and got reimbursed for it. Who knows? Or they eat it because that's just part of their business. They get to eat the cost. So anyway, just a little lesson on that, how they ship, and not not screwing them. Hey, if they want it back and they want to pay shipping, they can have it back, but they, they don't want it. Okay, so I just thought I'd tell you about that. Okay, so we'll end this video on that. Uh, next video, we just got a bunch of, I really want to start taking the LS out of that truck, the engine transmission and all the stuff, but I want to finish up all the little stuff on this. So next video, we'll get the brakes fixed, bleed them best I can, fill it up with fluid, get this dash, dash duct work and stuff done. Well, I'll have to order the duct work. 
get the steering uh this should be in, in a couple days um the rag joint assembly about the whole thing i told you we'll get that put in i'm going to get up underneath here let me show you see all this back part here we got to pour 50 clean all that up scuff it up and pour 15 that and then around the tunnel there and the inside of the frame i'm going to get it all all the rest of it done the back part's done the front part's done it's just kind of like the middle okay so we'll get that done next video too um just a bunch of all the little stuff so i don't leave too much stuff unbuttoned when i start on the ls i don't have to stop on that and that like i said in the last video it's going to be a long process here because i'm you know the trucks the trucks over here we're going to be taking everything off of that first thing we're going to take the whole front clip off because it's going to be a lot easier to pull it out so we're going to be taking off all the front bumper grill fenders hood radiator support radiator condenser all that stuff and we're going to take off the fuel tank all the fuel lines uh the cross member engine mounts the all the ac system all every electrical thing i can think of we're going to try to make everything work off that instead of buying stuff it's easy just to spend 1500 bucks on a new harness and you know a couple of hundred bucks here a couple of hundred bucks there before you know it you're you're in it thousands and thousands of dollars so we're going to see how much of that stuff we can actually use uh even if it takes a little bit more labor we're going to see See if we can use the fuel pump, fuel lines, uh, stuff like that. If not, yeah, that's another thing too. Yeah, people just buy new fuel pumps and new fuel lines and new this and new that. And by the time they're, they wonder why they're got you know five grand or ten grand or that one guy that emailed me's got twelve five in it, and and he, it's still not done. So. Uh, that's going to be coming up after we get all this little stuff done, okay? So, uh, I guess on this video, if you want to uh, support the channel, all I got is bumper stickers for five bucks. I don't have no t-shirts, no coffee mugs, no nothing. Uh, send to clunkersandclassics at gmail.com through PayPal. That's the only payment thing I got. Um like comment sh share subscribe subscribe if you haven't bottom right hand corner of the screen hit that little subscribe button hit the notification bell you know all that stuff if you want to be notified i put out a video uh seems about like about every four days now see and this little stuff it takes up takes up so much time because i gotta stop go to autozone buy a part go to you know wait you know, I think I made um, four, four or five trips to AutoZone just for this brake thing there, getting little unions and uh, brake lines and all kinds of crap. All that stuff takes time. And I got very limited, limited working time, a couple hours in the morning, a couple hours at night, uh, for probably another month. And then if it gets down into the 80s, and I can work all day. So anyway... Uh, yeah, thanks everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see y'all next video.